Welcome to the John Gets Games tutorial for Ginkopolis. In this video, I'll be teaching you the rules to the game as it's being played, and I will be showing a full three-player game today. Now, I do want to mention that the only reason this video is being made is because this game won the monthly poll that is voted on by the Patreon supporters of this channel. If you would like to directly support the channel and see videos like this one in the future be made, then please consider it by going to patreon.com slash Games. When you're there, you'll find a bunch of ways that you can really help things out, and some of them let you vote on videos just like this one, and you can also see these videos early and advertisement free. The last thing that I'd like to ask is that if you like this video in particular, that you please click the like button for it down below as well as the subscribe button for the channel. And also, if you notice any turns in this game that you thought I maybe should have done something differently, or if something about this game really jumps out to you, then please comment down below because I'd love to see it. All right, let's now jump into the game. Out here we have the game fully set up and ready to play for our three different players. Now before I go on, I would like to ask that you please turn on the Klingon subtitles because I might make mistakes as I'm showing the game, and those will let me put corrections on the screen where you should be able to see them. I will also put corrections below this video in the top comment, and the only other thing I'd like to point out is the fact that these colored cubes do not come with the game, I'm simply using them to better differentiate between the players' areas for this video. Well, let's start things off with a brief overview of the game. It's thematically set in 2212, and in this world, the ginkgo biloba tree, which is the oldest and strongest tree in the world, has become a symbol for a new method of building cities in symbiosis with nature. In this world, humans have exhausted essentially all of the resources, and they must now work together to build up and develop cities that maintain a delicate balance between resource production and consumption. Now that being said, this is a competitive game, so each of the players is going to be competing to grow this city out and gain the most success points along the way. Now mechanically, the way this game works is we are going to play through a number of rounds, and within each of those rounds, players are going to simultaneously select one out of the four cards they have in their hand. Once we have all done that, we will start revealing these in player order and perform an action based off of the card. If you play a card by itself, then depending on the type of card, you will gather various resources from the city itself. If instead, when you placed a card down, you also put a tile on it, then when you reveal it, depending on the type of card, this tile will go down either onto the outskirts, growing out the city, or it will be placed on top of another tile that already exists here in the city. Now, whenever we add tiles into the city, we are going to place our own resource tokens on top of it, and once the game is over, players will get points for having a majority of tokens within various areas of the same color tile. So we are vying to not only expand out in the city, but also go up, because when you stack tiles, you put resources on them equal to the level. So if there is a third level tile, there will be three resources, and again, you want to have a majority of resources within these colored districts in order to score the most success points for them at the end of the game. Now, once everyone has taken an action, there will be three cards left in their hand. Those will be passed to the left, and then every player will draw one card from the deck in order to refill back to four, where we will once again all simultaneously select one of those cards. Now, as we add new tiles down onto the board, we are going to bring cards out from these stacks that will get shuffled into this deck. So that means as we are playing through the game, the overall draw deck is going to be built communally by the actions that all of the players are taking. The last thing I'd like to mention for the overview is the fact that many of these cards get played in front of you, and whenever you do a matching action, you also get the benefits of all of those cards that are currently in your tableau. So you have some engine building over here while you are collectively building out Ginkopolis in the middle of the table. Now, I know that was a very high-level overview of how this game plays, but don't worry, I'll go into the details of each of these things when we bump into them while playing. With that in mind, I do think let's actually start playing the game. And for today's tutorial, we are going to play as the pink player over here. Now we have the starting player card, which means we are going to take the first action in the second phase of the round, but before we get to that, we have to perform the choose a card phase. The way this works is all players are going to simultaneously look at their four cards and then select one of those to place face down onto the table, and then they have the option of placing exactly one of these tiles from their supply on top of that card. In this case, I think we are going to place this card right over here. After that, we have the option of placing up to one tile on top of it, and I think we are going to place this tile right here. Then we put that face down, and now before we move on, I'd like to talk about these resources that are in front of us. As you can see, we have a shield here, and when you're playing this game normally, you make sure that the shield is between your opponents and all of your resources. The resources are going to be these success points that look like ginkgo below the leaves, also these resource cylinders here, and the tiles that you have in front of you. So that means all of this is hidden information that your opponents cannot see, but then everything up here is information that your opponents can see. 
Now, speaking of that, we do have these three character cards up here, and we got these during setup. Now, you can either do a hand draft to gain these, or you can take sets of them, and we just did sets for this game, which is why all three of these characters have a three in the corner to show that this is the third set. Now, these character cards dictated the resources that we started with. As you can see, that shows five of the resource cylinders, four of the success point icons, and then two of the tile icons. When we look behind our screen, we do indeed have four success points, five of these resources, and we had two of those tiles, but of course we did place this one on top of our card. After making this decision, we now have to wait for our opponents to simultaneously make their own card decisions. When we focus out, it looks like everyone has made their decisions, so we can now move into the second phase where each of these will be resolved. The order for this will be dictated by this starting player card, so this means we will reveal this and perform our action first, then we will go clockwise to the next player who will reveal and perform that action before we finish it up with the black player over here who will then reveal and perform their own action. So let's go ahead and reveal our pick, and now we have to perform the action. With this in mind, let's focus on the backside of our player screen, because this does a great job of explaining exactly what we have to do now. Now, there are three different situations that we could have with our decision. The first option is if we played a card with no tile on it, and if that was the case, we would perform the associated icons on this top row. The second option is if we played an urbanization card with a tile. As you can see, this is an urbanization card, and you know that because it has a letter in the top left and right corners, whereas the building tiles have numbers and colors in their top right and left corners. When we look back at our shield, as you can see, the bottom row is associated with having a building card and a tile, but again, this middle row is the urbanization card and a tile, so this is what we are going to be doing right now. Now, technically, this is called an urbanizing action. The first thing that we have to do is take the tile that we chose and place it on top of the token that shares the letter on the card that we chose. In this case, we chose the F card and this tile here, and that means we are going to urbanize this F location. So we can replace the F with the new tile, and then we have to place this F tile onto one of the adjacent empty sides on the tile that we just played. So we can put it here, or we can put it over there, and I think we'll put it right over here. After that, we have to place exactly one of our resources on top of that tile, as well as place one construction site token. Those are right over here, so we can place both of these on top of that tile, and this construction token is there to remind us that currently, we haven't added a card into the deck for that tile. Now, I will explain how we add the cards into the deck later on, and this will be a reminder for us when the time comes. After that, we can then take items based off of the adjacent tiles to where we just urbanized. What this means is we are going to activate every single tile that is adjacent to the tile we just placed. In this case, that is just going to be this tile here, though. But if there was a tile here and there, we would activate all of those in any order of our choice. So we're just going to activate this tile, and when we do that, we will gain a number of the associated item equal to its height. This has a height of 1, which means we will gain 1 item, and it is blue, which means we are going to gain 1 tile. If we were to be activating one of these yellow tiles, then instead of getting a tile, we would gain success points, and having the most of these at the end of the game is how you win. Finally, if you activate a red tile, then this is how you gain more resources of your color from the supply that you then put back behind your screen, and remember we needed to have these behind our screen to place it onto the tile that we just urbanized. So once again, we are just going to activate this tile, and it's a level 1 blue tile, which means we will gain one random tile from the supply. So we can take this one here, and then that'll go with the other one. It looks like we have two red tiles currently. Next up, it's now time for us to activate any urbanization bonuses that we have in our tableau in front of our shield. The urbanization icon looks like that, as you can see on the card that we played. And over here, you can see we have two of these cards, which means both of these are bonuses that we'll activate right now. This one right here says every time we urbanize, we will gain one success point, and this one says every time we urbanize, we will gain one random tile from the supply. Let's take this one here, and that's yellow, and then of course we do get one success point, so we can add that to the four that we already have, and we now have five. After gaining bonuses, the final thing that we have to do is discard the card that we chose for this action. We do that by simply putting it face up on top of this discard pile over here next to the main draw pile. Well, it looks like we are done with our turn, so now play can go clockwise over here to the green player, and they put this card down with no tile on top of it. Now, this is a building card, and this means they will be doing an exploit action, which is the top row on our player shields. As you can see, the exploit area is split into two smaller rows, the top one for if you placed a urbanization card without a tile, and the bottom one for if you played a building card without a tile. In this case, the green player played a building card, 
So what that means is they're going to find the tile that matches this card, in this case that is the blue 3, and then they will activate it, gaining a number of its items equal to its level. When they glance out, they can see the blue 3 tile is right over here. It's worth noting that there is exactly one card in the deck for every top tile that's out here in the middle of the table. Since it's blue, that means they will gain tiles, and since it's on the first level, they will gain one tile, so they can take one from the supply and put that behind their screen, and that's finished their entire action. Now that might look familiar to you, and that's because when you urbanize, you activate the adjacent tiles in the exact same way when you put a card down without placing any tiles on top of it. Let's focus back over here, and the reason the player aid says you gain two tiles is because it shows an example where this blue 5 is a second level, which is why you would take two of the associated item. After exploiting, the green player can now activate any exploit bonuses that show up in the cards in front of their shield. When we focus back on their area, it looks like they have two of them. This one says every time they exploit, they will gain one success point, so they can take that. And then this one says every time they exploit, they will gain one resource from the supply. So that means overall they gained one tile, one success point, and one resource. So this is a very balanced exploit action. After potentially gaining bonuses, the final thing that happens is the exploited card is going to be discarded in the same way that we saw this card was when we urbanized. Well, green is done with their turn, so now the black player can go, and they do have a tile on top of their card. When they reveal it, it looks like this is a building card with the red 6 tile. With that in mind, let's focus back over here, and since they have a building card with a tile on top of it, they are going to be performing the construct a floor action down at the bottom. The way this works is they're going to place their selected tile on top of the tile stack that matches the card that they chose. In this case, they chose the yellow 3 card and the red 6 tile, so that means the red 6 will be placed on top of the yellow 3 tile out there on the main board. When they do this, they have to put a number of resource tokens down on top of the new tile equal to the height of that tile. These resources have to come from behind their screen, so they have two of them because this is going to go onto the second level, and this red 6 is going to go on top of the yellow 3. Now before they actually do that, I'd like to mention that there could be some resources already on this tile. For example, if it looked like this, then before this tile is added, all of the resources on the tile are going to be removed and returned to the matching player who puts it behind their screen. We can see that right over here, and if you removed resources from an opponent, then they also gain success points equal to the number of resources that were just removed. That being said, if you remove your own resources, you do get those resource tokens back behind your screen, but you do not gain any extra success points. So, in that example, if the black player had removed one of our resources, we would have also gained one success point. Once all of the previous resources are removed, the current player now needs to see if they have to pay any penalties. The first one of these is a penalty if the tile that is being placed is a different color than the tile that it is covering. If those colors are different, then the active player must take one of the resources from behind their screen and place it back into the supply. The other possible penalty happens if the tile that's being placed has a lower value than the tile that is covering up. In that case, you must spend success points back to the bank equal to the difference between those two tiles. So, for the example on the back of our player sheet, there is a red 4 being placed on top of a blue 5. Since those colors are different, they have to spend an extra resource, and since the 4 is less than 5, they have to pay one success point because there's a difference of 1 between those two numbers. So, let's look back out here, and as you can see, the black player is putting a red tile on top of a yellow one, so the colors don't match. That means they have to take one resource from behind their screen and put it back into the supply so they don't have access to that until they are able to gain it again in the future. And then we can see this is a value 6 tile going on top of a 3. Since this number is greater than or equal to the tile that they're covering, they won't have to pay a success point penalty. So they've paid the applicable penalty and now they can place this on top. And then of course this is a second level tile, so they're going to put two of the resources down on top of it. Now it is worth noting that if you don't have enough items for an urbanization or a construct a floor action, then you are not allowed to actually do it. So for example over here, if they did not have two of these resources behind their screen, then they could not do this action because there must be two on there. And if they had to pay a success point penalty for playing a lower value and they didn't have those points, they also could not perform this. With that in mind, if it's ever your turn and you have an urbanization or building card in front of you with a tile, but then you do not have the items you need to actually perform the urbanization or constructing a new floor action, then you instead take that tile and put it back behind your screen and then perform an exploit action with the card that you chose. Well, let's move on with the black player's turn, and the next thing that happens is if they have any construct a new floor bonuses in their tableau, they will now activate all of those. 
when we focus back over here, they have two construct a floor bonuses. So this one is going to get them one success point every time they construct a floor. And this one will get them one tile from the supply every time they construct a new floor. After taking bonuses, the final thing that happens is the card that was selected gets added into that player's tableau. This means they can place it in front of their shield, and it's a good idea to stack these associated with the matching bonus. As you can see, this has yet another Construct a Floor bonus. So that means in the future, when the black player constructs a floor, they are going to gain two success points as well as one tile from the supply. Now I do want to point out that by putting this card over here, they have permanently removed the three yellow card from the deck. That does make sense, because when we look back out here, the yellow three has been covered up, and as I said, the deck only has cards equal to the tiles that are on top of these stacks, so every time you cover up one of these tiles, that card will be removed from circulation and placed into that player's tableau. Now there is one final thing that I missed, and that is that when you construct a new floor, you also have to place a construction site token on top of that tile. At this point, we are done with the resolve action phase because we've all performed one action, so now we can move into the third phase of the round where we prepare for the next round of the game. The first thing that we do is take all three cards that we still have in our hand, and we pass those clockwise to the next person on our left. That means we are going to gain these three cards from the black player, and the green player will pass these over here to the black player. Now, in addition to passing those cards, the player who had the first player card has to pass that as well. So this is going to be passed over here to the green player, and they'll be the first player in the next round. After cards have been passed, we now need to all draw one card from the top of the deck so that we have four cards for the next round. Now we do this in player order, starting with the first player card. So the green player will draw this card, the black player will draw that card, but then as you can see, there are no more cards in the deck for us to draw one to get to four in our hand. Now at any time, if the draw deck is ever empty, we then have to reconstitute a new draw deck, and obviously once we do that, we can then draw one card from it. Now when we do this, we first have to look out here and find all tiles that have construction site tokens on them. As you can see, there are two of those tokens, and we can start up here with this one. Now what we have to do is find the red 6 card, and as you can see, we have three sorted decks over here. All of these are red, and they are in order from 4 all the way up to 20. The red 1, 2, and 3 were part of the initial deck. As you may have noticed, there was red 1, 2, 3, blue 1, 2, 3, and a yellow 1, 2, 3 as a part of the initial 9 tiles in the grid. So we are looking for the red 6, and then we are just going to add that card into the discard pile. After we do that, we can remove this construction site token, and then down here, we have to find the yellow 11 card from the deck and add that into the discard pile. Once there are no more construction tokens out here, it's now time for the discard pile to be shuffled. And this is going to create the new draw deck. Now, if this was a four or five player game, then that is all that we'd have to do and players could now draw as normal. But if this is a two or three player game, which we are playing right now, we take the top seven cards and then we put those into a face up discard pile over here. And then we have a much smaller draw deck that players can then draw from. So this is why there were so many cards in the discard pile at the start of the game, because we did that during setup. And we will do that every time we reconstitute the deck, since this is a three player game. Well, it's now time for us to draw a card so we can take this into our hand. That card is, oh, the yellow 11. So that is one of the new cards that was just added in. All right, the first round of the game is over, so now we can start the second round, and we begin with a choose a card phase. So we can all simultaneously choose one card to play, and when we look at our hand of cards, you'll notice that all four of them are building cards. That means we do not have an option of urbanizing right now, because we would need an urbanizing card. That's unfortunate, because we do have two bonuses for urbanizing, but we don't always have to be chasing the bonuses on the cards above our shield. Now, before we select one of these, there is another option available to us, and that involves getting rid of one of these redraw tokens. At the start of the game, every player gained two of these, and for each of these that we have at the end of the game, we will get two success points. That being said, we could permanently get rid of this in order to place our entire hand into the discard pile and then draw four new cards from the top of the deck. So obviously that would be forfeiting two of our points to do it, but if we really hate our hand of cards, that will give us more options. I don't think we're going to do that right now though. Instead, I think let's go ahead and play this yellow 11, which is one of those new cards, and let's put a tile on top of it. In particular, let's place this red 14. Since this is a tile being placed on top of a building card, that means that we are planning on constructing a new floor on top of the yellow 11 tile. We can now wait for our opponents, and the green player has made their decision, and so has the black player. All right, that means the green player can now go, and they have played the blue 2 card and the red 9 tile. This means they are constructing a new floor on top of the blue 2, and there are no resources they need to remove from it. 
They also don't have to pay a one resource penalty because the colors match, and they don't have to pay a success point penalty because this number is equal to or greater than the number of the tile they are covering up. So we can put this right over here. They then have to put two of their resource tokens on top of it, as well as one construction site. After that, they have one bonus for constructing a new floor, and that simply gets them a new tile. And then they can finish their turn by placing this down into a new column. This is the first bonus that they have that pertains to urbanization. All right, black can now go, and it appears they are going to be urbanizing on location B with this red eight. B is up here, so they can put the eight on that location. And then the only spot they can put the B is up there because these other two spots are already full. After that, they can put one resource and one construction site token down, and then they will activate all of the adjacent tiles. That's going to be just this one right here. It's a level one and is red, so that is going to get them one of the resources from the supply. After that, they have one urbanization bonus, and that's going to get them another resource from the supply. And finally, they can discard this card to finish their turn. That means it's time for us to go, and this is what we picked. Now, we have a building card and a tile, which means we are going to be building a new floor on top of this tile. As you can see, this is a red tile being placed on top of a yellow tile, so we are going to have to pay one resource back to the bank as a penalty. And then after that, we have to remove all resource tokens from the tile we're covering up. That's just this one, and actually, we technically remove this before we pay a penalty. So that means we could have paid this one as the penalty, but in this case, we'll just bring this back behind our screen. But as you can see, that order is important. If you cover up your own tokens, you can use them to pay that different color penalty. Now this tile is a 14 onto an 11, which means we don't have to pay a success point penalty. And then this is on the second level. So we have to put two of our resources down. And of course there needs to be one construction token. After that, we don't have any bonuses associated with constructing a new floor. And then the final thing that we do is we add this into our tableau. Now, as you can see down below, it does not have a black arrow. And that means this is actually an end game victory point scoring card. Every single card that is value 10 to 20 is end the game victory points, whereas all of the value 1 through 9, as well as the starting characters, have arrows which give you benefits when you perform one of the three main actions in the game. So we can place this face up in front of us, and that means that when the game is over, this is going to get us one success point for every resource token that we have on top of a red tile. Currently, we have two resources on top of a red tile, so if the game was to end right now, this would be worth two extra success points, and we'd simply take those from the supply during final scoring. So, as we construct new floors, we are going to be either building out an engine for the middle of the game that will get us resources that we can use, or we will be getting endgame victory point conditions that we can then actively work towards. Well, we are done with our turn, and the action phase is also done, but now before we move on, I think it's a good time to talk about how the game will end. So let's focus over here, and there are two different endgame triggers. The first one is simple, and that says that if at any point during a round, any player has all of their resource tokens out here in Gamecopolis, then that will trigger the end of the game once we complete one full round, even if later on within that round, that player has had some of their resources removed from the city. Now, I do want to point out that the number of resource tokens we have in the supply varies with the player count. Now, in the case of that trigger, you finish the round, and then you go right into final scoring. Now, the other trigger has to do with these tiles over here. If at any point there are no more tiles left in the supply, then we immediately perform a one-time tile buyback. The way this works is all players will simultaneously, behind their screens, decide on a number of tiles that they currently have that they are going to give back to the supply. Once we've all made that decision, we will place those tiles back into the supply, and then we will all gain one success point for every tile that we just put back into the supply. Now, this is simultaneous, and it's possible that no players will put any tiles back, but in general, at least one person does this to get points for extra tiles that they don't think they need. It's worth noting that tiles that you have behind your screen are not worth anything at the end of the game, so using the buyback to gain a success point for each of those does seem like a good idea, once again, if you have more than you think you're going to need by the end of the game. After the buyback, the game will continue on as normal, but if at any point this supply of tiles is once again exhausted, then that will trigger the end of the game, and players will once again complete the round before moving into final scoring. With that in mind, let's now talk about final scoring. Now, players are going to add success points to the number that they've gained throughout the game from a few different avenues. The first is players will gain points for all of their endgame scoring cards in their tableau, like this one that I already described. And then after that, players will gain two success points for each of the refill tokens that they still have at the end of the game because they did not use them. Finally, players will gain success points based off of the number of resources they have out here in various districts in the city. 
Now, I haven't talked about how this works at all yet, and I think this is a good time. To start things off, we first need to define a district. Now, that is a set of two or more tiles that are touching each other orthogonally, that are in an orthogonally adjacent cluster of the matching color. So if we took this city as an example, we have a district of two tiles right over here because they are adjacent and they are the same color. And then we have a district of one, two, three, four, five tiles because they are all red and there is more than one of them. Speaking of which, that means that this tile right down here is not associated with a district because it is by itself not being adjacent to any other red tiles. And the same thing can be said for this blue tile right over here since it's not adjacent to any blue tiles. But obviously that can change as more tiles are urbanized around the outside. And of course, as you add new tiles on top, the color does not necessarily have to match. So if a non-red tile was placed right over here, then this district, which was a size 5, will be broken up. During final scoring, we are going to score every district in the city. The way this works is the player who has the most resources in that district is going to gain one success point for every resource in that district, and that includes their opponent's resources as well. So, for example, if this was right over here, then the black player has three resources compared to our two, so black has the most, and they will gain one, two, three, four, five success points. After that, the player who has the second most resources in this district will gain one success point for each of their own resources. So once again, using this example, we would have the second most, and that means we would get two success points because we have two of our resources in that overall district. Now, if you have a situation where one player has the most, and they're also the only player in that district, that means they are technically the first place and second place player. So they'll gain one point for all of the resources in that district and one point for all of theirs. And in reality, that just means they will gain two points for each of their resources in that district. Now you may be wondering what happens if there is a tie, and in that case, the tied player who has tokens on the highest level tile is going to break the tie in their favor. And if there is still a tie, then the player with the tallest building showing the highest number in that district has the advantage. So between green and pink, we would be winning the tie for second place because we are on a 3 compared to the 1 of green. So once again, we are going to score every district in the city, and players will gain success points for those. And once that is done, the player who has the most overall success points will be the winner. Well, on that note, let's now rejoin the game, and we now need to get ready for the third round. The first thing that we have to do is pass our cards. So the green player is going to pass these cards over to black. That means the black player will be the starting player. We are going to gain these from the black player, and then we can pass those over. After that, the black player is going to draw one card. We are going to draw one card, and then the green player will draw one card. And as you can see, we once again have a deck that does not have any cards left in it. This means we once again have to build a new deck by putting new cards into the discard pile for each of these construction tokens, and then we shuffle all of that up. So we're going to add the red 8, the blue 9, and the red 14. After that, we can shuffle this up and then discard 7 of them because we're playing a 2 or 3 player game. Alright, it's time for the next round, and we can choose one of these cards. I think from this point on in the game, I'm actually going to be removing this from our area, and let's go ahead and slide these things up so that we can easily analyze our situation, and we just have to remember that our opponents can't see how many success points, resources, or tiles that we have behind our screen. So these are the options that we have, and three of them are urbanization, which again we get two bonuses for. When we urbanize, we get an extra success point and an extra tile, which is certainly not a bad thing. Also, if we were to exploit, we would get another resource, and we currently have three of those, which isn't too bad, but it's certainly easy to spend those, as you've seen. Now, whenever we urbanize, we activate all of the tiles adjacent to the spot that we urbanize. So we can look out here and see that H would go here, and that would get us one success point. G is right here, and that would get us one tile, and then E is right there. Now that is next to a level 1 red and a level 2 red, so by urbanizing right over here, we would get 1 plus 2 or 3 resources just for urbanizing there. Honestly, that does feel like a pretty good plan, but another thing that we could do is construct a new floor on this one. We could put the 17 right over there and put a couple of our resource tokens, but that would actually still put us in second place with the black player, but of course a lot of things could change as the city grows. I don't think this makes sense though. Instead, let's go ahead and urbanize on E. And then we do have to add a tile. Now, if we put this 17 red there, that would combine this with that overall larger red district. And it would get one token, which means we would have three, and so would the black player. Now, the game is far from being over yet, so vying to have the most of these resources within a district is a little bit silly, considering so much can change as new tiles are placed. But it is something we do want to keep in mind as the game goes on. 
Now we only have two tiles, so if we urbanize here, it's going to be this tile or it's going to be this one. If we place that there, then obviously we are not adding into that overall district over there. Honestly, I think adding pressure into that district on the black player is just fine with me. So I think we are going to go ahead and place this tile on top of our card, and that's going to be our pick. All right, we've all made our decisions, and the black player can go first, and they are going to be urbanizing on location L. They're doing this with the red 10, so they're going to place this over there, and they'll put the L like this. Now they have to place one of their resources and a construction token, and then when they activate everything around it, that'll just be this. That is a second level red tile, so that's going to get them two resources from the supply. In addition to those, since they urbanized, this bonus will go off, getting them a third resource. After that, we can go. Obviously, we are urbanizing on location E. We're going to put this 17 right there. We also have to put a resource as well as a construction token. And then when we activate the adjacents, we'll get two resources for this and one for that. So that is going to be three resources. In addition to that, we will get one success point as well as one new tile. And that is the blue four. Now, these are a little bit risky. They're very low value. And of course, you don't want to have to pay a success point penalty by putting a lower value on top of a higher one when building floors. But we'll just have to see what our options are like as we continue. At this point, we are done. So we can discard this. And now green can go. They are constructing this tile on top of the blue one. Now that is going to have a color penalty, so they'll have to spend one of the resources back to the supply, and then they can put two of the resources on top of that tile, along with the construction token. Next up, they do have one build of floor bonus, and that's going to get them a tile. And then finally, this will be added into their tableau, and that is their third exploit bonus. So they are pretty incentivized to take exploit actions, which we haven't seen much of so far in the game. But obviously, as these build up, it's more and more likely to happen. The action round is done, so it's time to pass cards. And then we can draw cards. We will get one, the green player will gain one, and black will gain one. And there's still one card over there in the deck, so we don't have to do anything else over there at the moment. All right, let's figure out what card we're going to play from these. Two of these are urbanization cards, which will get us bonuses. And currently, we don't actually gain any bonuses for constructing new floors. Now, we can see this is for B, which is over there. And then K is right there. Now, K is interesting because that is adjacent to two of these tiles. So if we urbanized a tile on this spot, we would gain one resource from this level one red tile, and we would get two tiles from this level two blue tile. That does certainly seem like a great option for us. But another thing to consider is that if we were to construct a new floor using this card right here, then we would place it onto the three, and then we would gain a construct a floor bonus for the rest of the game. Currently, we don't have any of those, and I think it's very likely we are going to construct more floors as the game goes on. So being able to gain extra resources every time we construct a floor is definitely something that's worth considering. Between these two options, though, I think we're going to go with K. The fact that this is adjacent to two tiles is going to put it over the edge. So let's use this card right here. And then when we urbanize, we're going to place one of these two tiles down onto that spot. It can be a yellow or a blue. And if it is blue, that will essentially create a district over here where the green player will have an advantage with one more resource than us. But again, the game is still quite early, so these districts can certainly change and morph as things go on. Between these two, I think we'll put the yellow four down. All right, we've all made our decisions, and it appears both of our opponents are going to be exploiting because they don't have a tile on top of their card. Now we get to go first, so we can flip this over and then urbanize. When we do this, we'll put the four on top of the K. Then we have to add one resource and a construction token. And after that, we are going to gain one resource for activating this adjacent first level red tile. And then after that, we are going to gain two tiles because this is adjacent to a blue tile on the second floor. So these will be the two tiles that we get. And then after that, we can activate our bonuses. We have two of them for urbanization. This one is going to get us a success point, And then the other one is going to get us yet another tile. So we actually have four tiles behind our screen now. Finally, we can put this into the discard pile. After that, green can go. And they are going to exploit the red one tile. It's on the first level, so that means that they are simply going to gain one resource and put that behind their screen. But then after that, they have three bonuses for exploiting. When we focus over here, the first one is going to gain them another resource, the second one is going to gain them a success point, and the third one is going to gain them one tile. 
After that, the black player is exploiting as well, but they're doing it with one of these urbanization cards. Remember, if you do that, you simply take one tile or one resource, and they've decided to take a tile. It looks like maybe they don't actually have any tiles left behind their screen. So they'll take this tile here, and they don't actually have any bonuses, so they were not feeling too happy about that overall turn. Perhaps they should have discarded one of these to gain more card options, but they decided not to for this turn. All right, the actions are done, so we can pass cards. And then we can draw cards with the green player starting, and that's the final card of the deck. So it's time to build a new deck. And it looks like we have four new cards to add in. That's going to be the red 10, the red 17, the red 4, and the yellow 4. So that is a lot of red cards being added into this overall deck. Next up, the black player can draw one card from the new deck, and then we will draw one, and now it's time for the next round of the game. So let's figure out which of these cards to play. Just like last round, we have two building cards and two urbanization cards, and urbanization is still pretty attractive to us considering we have these bonuses. Now the options are F as well as L, and that one is over here. So neither of these are adjacent to two tiles, although this one is next to a level two red tile, so that would get us two resources. Currently we do have five resources behind our screen though, so we don't desperately need more resources. Another thing that we could do is build a floor, and interestingly enough, both of the building cards that we have have urbanization bonuses printed on the bottom. So if we were to select this, for example, we would then want to put one of these tiles down to cover this spot, and then we would gain this, and that would be our third urbanization bonus, and it looks like we'd gain two success points every time we urbanize from that point out. I have to admit, that does seem like a pretty attractive option. Uh, there is this card as well, which would get us more resources, but so far in the game we haven't been having resource problems. Now another thing to consider is the fact that this is red and that one is yellow, and the red 2 is right over here. So if we were to place a red tile there, then that would be good, because that would potentially increase the number of points we get for our endgame scoring card. Now, of course, we could go with this yellow card and then place a red tile down on top of it. We'll just have to pay one resource as a penalty, and right now we have quite a few resources, so that wouldn't be that big of a deal. That being said, putting this tile right here would add more of our resources into this rather large red district, and that would help us for endgame scoring, but I think odds are pretty likely this district is going to get broken up before the game is over. Now the other big thing to think about is the bonus that comes with the bottom of the card. If we went with this spot, there is a good argument to be made for putting this right over here, but that would get us an urbanization bonus of a resource, whereas this one would get us more success points, and having the most success points at the end of the game is how we win. So I think we are going to go for that plan. We'll put this right over here, and we'll put this red 5 on top of it. Again, we're going with red instead of the yellow, because at the end of the game, every red resource that we have out here is going to be worth one success point to us. Well, we've all made our decisions, so the green player is going to start things off, and they are going to be constructing a new floor. That's going to happen on location 3, and they're going to put this red 7 on top, so they don't have to pay any penalties, and they do have to put two of their resources on top of it, along with a construction token. Next up, as a bonus, they will gain one tile, and then after that, they can put this into their area in front. They can put that right there, so now when they construct new floors, they will also gain a new resource from the supply. The black player is next, and they are also constructing a floor. In this case, this yellow 20 is going to go on top of the blue 9. When we look out here, the blue 9 is on this spot, and there are green resources on there. All of the resources will be returned, and since they are an opponent's resources, they will also gain one success point for each resource that they get back. After that, the black player will put this yellow on top of a blue, which means they do have to pay one resource as a color difference penalty. Now they can put this down, and this is interesting, because the maximum value for a tile is 20. Now you can cover up a 20 with a different 20 without paying a success point penalty. But there are only three 20s in the game, and this is one of them. So by putting this right over here, it's a lot less likely that anyone will cover this. And if they do, then the new tile will probably have a lower value, which means that player will have to pay a success point penalty to do that. So that means this tile has a pretty good amount of defense, and it is on the third level, which means the black player has to put three of their tokens down. And by putting a yellow tile here, they have combined this yellow with those over there to make a larger yellow district, where they currently have a majority of resources. After that, they can take their bonuses for constructing a new floor. That is going to be two success points as well as one tile that they can put behind their screen. In this case, they'll take a three and then put one back into the supply. 
After that, they now get to add this into their tableau, and this is their fourth bonus for constructing new floors, and this one actually gets them a tile as well as a success point. So, unlike other cards that we've seen, this one gives two bonuses instead of one. Black is done, which means it's time for us to go, and we are also going to construct a new floor. In this case, we are putting this red 5 on top of that yellow 2, so we have to spend one resource because the colors don't match, and then we are going to place two of our resources on top. So that large yellow district was pretty short-lived. We just cut that apart again, but at this point, the black player does still have a majority of resources in this smaller yellow district up above. Next up, we would take any new floor bonuses that we had, but we don't have any of those in front of us. So finally, we can simply add this into our tableau, and now we gain two success points and one tile every time we urbanize. Actions are done, so we can now get ready for the next round. And the black player is going to draw a card first, then we will draw one, and the green player will draw after that. All right, we can now figure out our turn, although before we get to that, I just realized that I forgot to put a construction token down onto both of these. Putting those down is a super important thing that I have to pay a little more attention to. Now we can look at our cards, and I'm pretty happy to see that all of them are urbanization, considering we get a bunch of bonuses for urbanizing. Now we have the G, which is here, the I, which is there. We have the H, which is over here, and the D, that's over there. So this is the only one that's adjacent to multiple things. If we went over here, that would get us one, two, three resources. And that's not a bad thing, considering we're down to just two resources over here, and we will have to use one of those when we urbanize. When it comes to the other options, if we went on I, that would get us two resources instead of three. H would get us one success point, and G would get us one tile, but I think we're pretty good on tile variety. Honestly, I think that D is going to be a good spot for us, so let's choose that card, and now we need to pick a tile. We have the blue 4, the blue 14, and this yellow 10. Now, if we put the blue 14 down, it would be somewhat more defended, because of course this is a higher number, so players are less likely to want to cover it up with a lower value number because they'll have to pay a penalty in those success points. That being said, if we keep these around for constructing new floors, then we are more likely to have higher value floors than the tiles that we cover up so that we don't have to pay that penalty. And I think with that in mind, let's go for the lowest value tile that we have, and we'll put that right over there. Obviously, if we had a red tile, we would be more incentivized to do that because we have this end game scoring card, but it looks like we've placed all of our reds. Well, we've all made our decisions, and black is going to go first, and they're simply exploiting on red 14. That is right over here, and it's a second level red tile, so that means when they exploit, they are going to gain two resources from the supply, and they can put those behind their screen. It seems likely that they had zero or very few of these, which was limiting their options. Unfortunately for them, they don't have any exploit bonuses down here, so that's another exploit turn that they're not feeling too hot about. They do currently get three success points and two tiles every time they construct a new floor, but so far they don't actually have that many ways to organically gain more resources. And as we discussed before, we are going to urbanize on location D. Now, when we do this, we can put one token down and a construction token, and then we will activate these adjacent tiles. So that's going to get us one, two, three resources. So we're back to having four resources. And I suppose we don't have that much resource generation from our bonuses either. We've just been urbanizing a lot and getting our resources from those adjacencies. Now, we do have to place this D token onto one of these two spots, and I figure we'll go up there. After that, we can activate our bonuses, so that is going to get us two more success points, and we will also gain another tile. All right, that has finished our turn, which means it's now time for green to go, and they are constructing a new floor. They are targeting red 2, and they're putting the red 9 on top of it. They, of course, have to put two of the resources on top of that tile and a construction token, and then after that, they can take bonuses. For constructing a new floor, they will gain a new tile, as well as one resource from the supply. After that, they can add this into their tableau, and it seems like they are pretty balanced. They've got multiple bonuses for all three of the actions that are in the game. The action round is done, so we can go ahead and pass all of our cards. And then we can start by drawing a new card, and then so will our opponents. Alright, let's figure out which of these cards we want to play. The two urbanization cards we have are B as well as J, and J would get us two resources as well as one success point due to those adjacencies. Also, we'd get two more success points and one tile. So that does seem like a pretty good spot to go down, but then we also have these two cards here. 
one is for the yellow one and the other is for that yellow four and we could construct a new level for each of those if we did that it appears both of them have the same bottom bonus where when you exploit you gain one success point so far we've done a good job of not exploiting though so i feel like this hand is really leading us towards more urbanization i know we're doing a lot of that in this game but you know we have bonuses for that so it does make sense since we're going to be placing on J, we now have to decide one of these. And, well, we could put a yellow down that would expand this district out. And we would put one resource down, so we'd still be in second place. But, of course, things like that can change as the city grows up and out. We could also place this blue over here, but that doesn't really do anything too compelling as far as connecting to other districts. So I think we are going to place a yellow tile. And let's go with the lower value one, so that is going to be the eight. All right, we've all made our decisions, so now we get to go first, and we are indeed urbanizing at J. So we can place this 8 over here, and then we'll put the J on that spot. After that, we have to put a resource down as well as a construction token, and now we can activate the adjacent tiles. This is a level 1 yellow, so that's going to get us one success point, and this is a level 2 red, so that is going to get us two resources. And then once we've finished that, we can take these bonuses. That is going to get us one new tile, and then we'll get two more success points. So we can take those from the supply, and that's finished a pretty good turn for us. Next up, green will go, and they are also urbanizing. In this case, they are putting a blue 13 onto the A location. They have to put one resource down as well as a construction token, and then when they activate the adjacent spots, this is going to get them one resource, and that will get them two. So that's three resources they get total that they can put behind their screen. After that, they can activate bonuses, and when they urbanize, they will gain a resource, so that's four total they got so far this turn, and they also gain a tile from the supply. All right, that's finished up their turn, which means it's time for black to go, and they are constructing a new floor on the red eight. The red 8 is here, and it does have a resource on it, so the first thing that happens is that needs to be removed, and since it matches the current player, they don't gain any success points for this, but they do get this resource, and they put it behind their screen. Now they have to put two resources on top of this new tile, and then we also need a construction token. And then after that, they will gain all of these construct a new floor bonuses. That is going to be three success points, as well as two tiles. Next up, they can gain this card and put it into their tableau. So now whenever they urbanize, they will get two resources as well as one success point. All right, we're done with actions, so it's time to pass cards. Next up, we can draw, and there's just one card in the deck, so that's going to go to the green player, and now we can build a new deck. Looking out at the city, there are eight construction tokens out here, so we have to add all eight of those cards into this discard pile. After that, the black player can draw one card, and then we will draw one, and now it's time for the next round, and we can pick one of these cards to play. We currently have three urbanization cards and one building, so that's pretty good if we want to urbanize again, and of course we do get some pretty good bonuses there. Now these are associated with L, F, and K, and L is between two, although these are both first level tiles. So by building over there, we'd get one extra resource and one extra tile. We do currently have three tiles, so getting another one isn't that big of a deal, but having a variety is nice as far as having more options. We also have this 17, and we could play this to exploit that to get one resource, which doesn't feel very good, although we do get a bonus resource whenever we exploit. Now, another thing to keep in mind is the fact that the effect at the bottom of 17 is another endgame victory point scoring one. Now, this says that for every one of our exploit bonuses, we will get two success points. Currently, we actually have three of those, so if we were to build a new floor onto 17, then this would get us six points at a minimum, and potentially more if we get even more of these exploit powers. Now, the issue here is that the 17 is a high number, and the highest value tile we have is a 14, so the difference between those is three. So in order to place this 14 on top of the 17, we would actually have to spend three of our success points. So this would be worth 6 minus 3, or just 3 success points total. And even though this feels like it's a good idea, I just don't think it's going to make sense right now. It's possible we might be able to play this later on in the game if it comes back into our hand, and maybe at that point we will have a higher value tile in our supply that we can use for it. 
So I think I've talked myself out of that, and I think we are going to urbanize once again. We are doing so much urbanizing in this game, and that's really not a bad thing as we spread the city out even more. Although, of course, when we build new levels, we put more of these resources down, and that helps us vie for these areas better. So at a certain point, we need to also focus on constructing more levels, but I think expanding out is also not a bad thing for us. Now, we're going to be placing onto the L spot, and I think let's use this blue 8 so that we can create a blue district that we can try to vie for majority in. We can put that on top of our card. It looks like we've all made our decisions, and the green player gets to go first. They are going to be constructing a new floor that will be on the red one, and they're putting this blue 16 down. That means the colors do not match, so they can pay one resource as a penalty, and then they'll place this right onto the 1. Now, this is a pretty consequential move. As you can see, that just broke up a large red district into a couple of smaller ones. Uh, the red district was spanning this entire area. Now, this is not a part of a district at all. There is a size 2 district here, and there's still a pretty large red district over there. And by doing that, the green player has actually isolated all of their resources on red tiles to one side. Now, they do have to put a couple of their resources onto the tile they just placed, because that is on the second level. And it's, of course, possible that another red tile could be placed on top of there, but we already see the red 17 is there. And, of course, players can put lower-value reds on here, but that will cost success points, and the green player is hoping that this is going to be well defended. This is also next to another blue spot with a green resource, so it's possible that green is hoping to combine these into a growing blue district, but we'll just have to see how that evolves as the city grows. They do have to put a construction token down right over here. And then since they constructed a new floor, they are going to gain one resource as well as one tile. After that, they can add this into their tableau, and that is their fourth exploit bonus. They haven't performed an exploit in a while, but if they do, then that's going to get them even more stuff. Green is done, so black can go, and they are going to urbanize at location C, putting the yellow 7 down. C is right up here, so they can place the tile like that. They will then put one resource and a construction token down, and then they will activate these adjacent tiles. They are both level 2 red tiles, so this will get them two resources, and that will get them two resources. So they will get four resources total. After that, they can take their urbanization bonuses, and that is going to get them two more resources, so that's six total that they've taken, and they will also gain one success point. After that, black is done which means we can go, and we are urbanizing at the L location. So we can put this over here or there, and I think we'll put it into the top position. And then we can put one resource as well as a construction token, and after that we will activate each of these. This is a level 1 red, so that's going to get us one resource, and that is a level 1 blue, so it's going to get us one tile. We can add those into our area and now take our urbanization bonuses. This is going to get us another tile, and then after that we will get two more success points. We've got four tiles in front of us, but unfortunately we are not finding red ones, but either way, this is still going to give us some good options. Well, our turn is done, and all actions have happened for the round, so we can now pass cards around. And then the black player will draw one. We will draw one, and the green player will also draw one. <laughs> it looks like we are going to be urbanizing yet again. Now, I do want to point out that there is another key difference between urbanizing and building floors, and that is the fact that those floors add cards in front of players, which build out their engine. We've been really leveraging this urbanization engine that we already have, but we've not been building this out anymore. In fact, it looks like over the course of the game, we've only added two cards total to our tableau, whereas the green player over here has added five and the black player has added three. Of course, the game isn't all about this engine building, but that is definitely something for us to keep in mind. And in fact, we kind of have one less card than both of our opponents as well, as far as engines are concerned, because this is an endgame scoring card. So we've only added one in-game bonus card throughout the entire game up to this point. And honestly, at this point, I kind of wish we had the ability to build a floor, but it looks like that is not the case for this round. So let's figure out which of these we want to urbanize. Our options are G, I, H, and J. So none of these are next to two different tiles, which is unfortunate, although the I is next to a second level tile, so that would give us a couple of resources. Now, we don't actually need resources at the moment. We have five of them. Uh, the G is next to the tile spot, and we don't really need tiles. So that leads me to think that maybe we should do the H so that we can go next to here and get another success point. In addition to that, we can put a yellow tile down and create a district over here that we could try to win. I think that's probably going to be a good idea. So let's select the H, and then we can place the 10 or the 12 down. And I think we'll put the 10 right there. 
All right, we've all made our decisions and the black player is going to go first and they are going to be constructing a blue 10 tile on top of the red six. Since these are different colors, they will have to pay a one resource penalty. And then when they go to place this onto the six, there are a couple of their resources so they can take these back. But of course, they don't get any success points because they have just covered up their own resources. This can go right over here. And that is a third level tile which means they now have to put three of their resources down. And just like that, they have started to create a pretty big blue district. This was a size two, and now it's a size four. And the black player has three resources compared to the three of the green player, and the black player is currently breaking that tie. Now, of course, we do need to put a construction token down right over there. And then the black player will gain all of their construct of four bonuses. That is going to be three success points, and they will also gain two tiles. So they can take these, and I do want to point out that the overall number of tiles is dwindling. There's only 14 left in the supply, and then the supplies of our resources is also getting a little smaller, although of course when we pay penalties, we do have to put those resources back into the supply. Lastly, they can add this to their gigantic sack of bonuses for constructing new floors. That is five different bonuses that they get. Black is done, so now we can go, and we are once again urbanizing. That is definitely the theme of this game so far, and I really think we need to start to change that and get some more of these cards put out. But either way, this is going to happen at H, so we can place this right over here. And then after that, we have to put one of our resources and a construction token, and then we'll activate this level one yellow. That's going to get us one success point. And then our bonuses will get us two more success points, as well as another tile. Ah, nice. That is a very high level red, and hopefully we can actually put this out here and toss some of our resources on it to get even more success for this card that we have in front of us. All right, we are done with our turn. Well, it's now time for green to go, and they are exploiting because they don't have a tile on top of their card. Now, they selected the red 17 location, and that is a first floor tile, so they are going to exploit that to gain one resource. That might not seem like much, but then they have four exploit bonuses. So they will get two more resources as well as one tile, and they will also get a success point. Then they can discard this, and we are once again done with an action round. So we are going to pass cards. And now draw one. So we will get this one here, and then green and black also get one card. As you can see, as more urbanization happens, it takes longer for us to get through this deck since more cards in general are added. Of course, when we add floors, we remove a card while adding a card, so that leaves the deck at the same overall size. Well, it's time for the next round, and these are the cards that we have to choose from. We currently have one urbanization option up here, which I don't think is something that we want to do. I do think this turn we should build a new floor with this one yellow, this four yellow, or this 16 red. Now, the 16 red is unfortunately not very good for us. It would get us two success points for every one of our exploit bonuses, and we currently only have one of those. So if we got that in front of us, it would only get us two success points. And the other cards that we have in our hand give us exploit bonuses of gaining one success point. Unfortunately, these are not really the cards that I was looking to add. Although if we are able to place this over here, that would incentivize us for placing these down in the future. We could also place one of these and hope to get that down. But honestly, I think it's pretty likely the green player will try to build this one out if possible, considering they currently have four of these exploit bonuses. So that is currently worth eight success points to them if they get it put into their tableau. Now, if we do go with 16, we have to keep in mind that that location is right over here, and there are a couple of the black player's resources on it. If we end up putting a tile down there, that will bring those back to the black player and give them two success, which isn't great, but it is something that we could do. And then, of course, we would be putting three of our own tokens down. If we put a red tile, that we wouldn't have to pay a penalty, and we do have four of these tokens, so we could afford to place a non-matching tile. Part of me feels like placing a blue tile over there would be great because we would put three of our resources down and then we would have four overall resources in a growing blue district. The problem with that is, of course, that this is a 16 and our highest blue is a 14, so we would have to spend two of our success points to put that down, so that would really have to be worth it to us. Now, another thing to keep in mind is the fact that we do get one success point for every one of our resources on red tiles out here at the end of the game. So that gives more reason to put this red 18 down. Although at this moment, that is not actually a district. We would definitely want to make sure that this would grow out enough to get some points to vie for a district before the game is over. And while the game isn't about to end, we are certainly over halfway. Realistically, I don't want to spend success points to play this, so I think we are going to go with this combo over here. It's not the mega turn that I was hoping for, but I think it's still going to be pretty good for us. 
All right, we've all made our decisions and we get to go first. So we are going to be constructing this floor on top of the red 16. Once again, that unfortunately means that these resources are going to go back to the black player and they will gain one success point for each of them. So they're not too unhappy about that overall. Then we can put this right here and then put three of our resources on top along with a construction token. Next up, we still don't have any bonuses for constructing a floor, which is probably part of the reason why we haven't done a lot of that so far this game, so we don't get any bonuses, but we do get to place this over here, and that gives us a second endgame scoring card that we want to work towards. We are done, so green can go, and they are going to be building a floor of their own, putting a blue 15 on top of the blue 4. That's pretty good for us. As you can see, we have one resource there, so we will get this back, and we will get one success point, so that is nice. Then they can place this over here along with two of their resources and one construction token. Next up, since they built a floor, they will get both of these bonuses. So that's one resource as well as one more tile. Lastly, they can add this to their gigantic stack of exploit bonuses. I think we are more happy now that we took this so that the green player would not have access to it, considering that would be worth 10 success points to them now. I don't think they were at all happy to see us remove that red 16 card from the circulation. With green done, black can go, and they are going to be constructing a floor. That's a yellow 18 on the blue-red, so they do have to spend one resource as a penalty because the colors don't match. Then they can place these out right like this. That is a second floor, so they can put two of the resources down alongside one construction token. And as you can see, there is just one more of the starting nine tiles that is currently of Now that yellow matched up with these two, making this a bigger district, and obviously the black player is currently in the lead with two compared to our one in that yellow district. After that, they are going to take all of these Construct a Floor bonuses. So that is going to be three success points. They will also get two tiles from the supply, and they will gain one resource from the supply. Finally, they can add this to that stack, and they are now definitely hoping to see the scoring card for the bonuses for building new floors. Well, we're all done taking actions, and it is worth noting that there are just nine tiles currently left in the supply. So let's get ready for the next round by passing our hands. And then we can draw cards. Green gets this one, black gets that one, and we get this one right here. Next up, let's figure out which of these cards we want to play. We currently have three urbanization cards and one building card, and that would give an exploit power, which we do already have a few of. But the problem is that if we want to actually play this out, we have to put a tile on top of it, and we currently have our own tokens there. Now the issue is that we don't have any red tiles, and again, we would like to have our resources on red tiles once the game is over to get points for this card. So we'd essentially be removing points by putting these onto a blue or a yellow tile. Now that would be the third level, so if we did that, we could put this yellow down over there, and then we would have three resources there, and that would merge this yellow district with that one, so we would actually have six resources compared to the five of the black player. So that would actually put us in the lead for the number of resources in that large yellow district. And honestly, you can get a ton of success points for winning those majorities. So maybe this is actually going to be a good idea for us. We could also urbanize, which would get us a couple of success points. But with the E, K, and F, I'm not really seeing any awesome combos going on. Every single one of these is just next to a single other tile for activation purposes. So yeah, I think we are going to go for this. We'll put this right over there with the yellow 12 on top of it. All right, we've all made our decisions, and green's going to go first, and they are going to exploit again, and they've decided to exploit red 9. That is a second level red tile, so they're going to gain two red resources from the supply, and then they will gain all five of these exploit bonuses. Two of them will get them resources from the supply, so there's just one green resource left over there. They will also gain one success point, as well as two tiles from the supply, so there are just seven tiles left there. They can finish their turn by discarding this, and I do want to point out that part of the reason they chose this card is because they did not want it being passed around to other people, because as you can see, the red 9 spot is at a very crucial part of this large red district. So if a non-red tile was placed there by an opponent, that would break this apart, and then they would have their resources on a couple of single red tiles, which of course aren't districts and won't score at the end of the game. So by using this card, they are hoping it's a lot less likely to come back into circulation and then be used by an opponent to build another floor on that location. Now before we move on, I do want to point out that one of the triggers is not all of the resources being gone from the supply for a player, but instead it's having a player have all of their resources currently played out in the city. Currently, the green player has a bunch of resources behind their screen, so while we are starting to get close to the end of the game, the fact that they have just one in the supply is not an actual trigger. 
green is done so black can go and we're not too surprised to see them continuing to build floors considering their massive amount of bonuses that they get for that now they are going to construct this yellow 19 on top of the red 14 the colors don't match which means they do have to spend one resource as a penalty after that, there are two of our resources on the red 14, so we'll get these back, and for each of them, we will gain one success point, so that is certainly not a terrible thing, although we, of course, lost those resources out here on the board to vie for these district majorities. Now, this 19 will go right over there, and that has added to this yellow district, and, of course, that is a third level, which means they have to put three of their tokens down, as well as one construction token. Next up, they're going to gain all of these bonuses. That is going to be three success points, as well as one resource. And then after that, they will get one, two, three tiles from the supply. After taking those, it looks like there are just four tiles left in that supply. Remember, once all of these are gone, we will have a one-time buyback where players can take tiles from behind their screens and put them back into the supply and gain one success point for each. And it looks like that is approaching quite quickly. Lastly, they can add this into their tableau, and that is an endgame scoring card. This is going to get them one success point for every tile that they have out on the board that has one or two of their resources. So if there are three or more resources, that will not count for this. So this gives you points for your lower level tiles. Currently, the black player has three tiles that have one or two of their resources. So at the moment, this is worth three points to them. But of course, that will very likely change before the end of the game. All right, black is done, which means it's time for us to go. And this yellow district is getting pretty crazy. We are putting this yellow 12 on top of the red five. So we have to pay one resource as a color not matching penalty. Then we are going to take these back from the five and put the 12 there. That is a third level. So we can put three of our resources down along with a construction token. And now when we look at this yellow district, the black player has eight of their resources compared to our six. So right now, this is not working out anywhere near as good as I'd hoped. But it's possible we could change things by covering this one up or doing some various other things, like actually covering up one of their third levels with a fourth level. We would put four of our resources as long as we actually had those resources to place. Of course, if we displace our opponents, they do get points for that. But we'll just have to keep all of these things in mind as we continue to play. Next up, we gain no bonuses for constructing those floors, which is definitely a bummer. And then we can add this into our tableau, and that goes right over here. So we have four of those urbanization bonuses. And with that in mind, our urbanization actions just got even better. We currently only have two resources, so I think it's actually pretty likely that we'll do some urbanization soon. Uh, either way, that's finished our turn. And the action round is done, so we can pass cards. And it looks like we got three urbanization cards from the black player, so we will have options for that. Now we can draw cards. Black is going to take this, and then we need to build a new draw deck. Currently, there are 10 construction tokens out here, so we have to find all 10 of those cards and add those into the discard before we shuffle this up. After that, we get to draw a card, and so does the green player, and now it's time for the next round. So we have to choose one of these cards to play. And of course, we could discard all four of these by using one of these tokens to then draw four more cards. But considering we probably want to urbanize, I think this hand is going to be fine for us. Actually, I just realized we drew the red nine. I mentioned that the green player wanted this one to kind of go away, but it went into that shovel and popped right back into our hand. So we could play this one right now instead of urbanizing. As you can see, that is right here. And if we put either of these blue tiles down, that would really disrupt things. But I just realized that would be a third level, and we currently only have two of these resources. So we definitely would not have enough for the level as well as the penalty. So while I would love to use this, we are not going to be able to construct a floor with it. Now, our urbanization options are G as well as I and J. So both G and I are next to two tiles, which is an important thing to consider. Between positions I and G, the only real difference is that this spot, when urbanized, would get us three plus one or four success points, whereas this spot would get us two plus one or three success points, and four is certainly bigger than three. So let's go with the I, and I figure we may as well put this blue six on top of it. All right, we've all made our decisions, and the black player is going to go first. It looks like they are urbanizing at the B location with this yellow five. B is up here, so they can put that tile into that spot. And that means currently this is still not a district, because it is still not next to any reds. Now they have to put one of their tokens down along with a construction token, and then they'll activate all of the adjacent spots. So that means they'll get three resources from this level three red tile. They can take those from the supply. 
And then as bonuses, they will take two more resources from the supply, as well as one success point. All right, that has finished their turn. With black done, we can go, and we are going to urbanize at I. Now, I think we will slide that over and put the six just like that. We can put one resource there as well as one of these construction tokens. Then we'll activate both of these. So that is going to be three success points plus one. So that is four success points total. And then from our bonuses, we will get two more success points. We will also gain one resource and we will get one tile from that dwindling supply. Which means the green player can go and they are going to construct this blue 20 on top of the blue 13. Blue 13 is here, and they are covering up one of their own resources. This will, of course, go back behind their screen, and then they can place this right here. That is a second level tile, so they're going to put two of their resources on top of it, along with a construction token. And then they'll activate both of these bonuses. This is going to take their final resource from the supply and put it behind their screen, and that will let them draw a tile. So there are just two tiles left in the supply. After that, they can add this to their area, and that is going to get them one success point for every one of their resources on blue tiles at the end of the game. That action round is done, so we can go ahead and pass cards. And then we can draw cards, starting with us. So we have to choose one of these cards, and honestly, this hand is not very good. Um, we don't have enough resources to construct a new floor with any of them, so we can exploit with one of them, or we could ditch all four of them and draw a new hand of four cards. Well, let's start by considering exploiting. The yellow one and four are both single level spots, so that would get us one success point as well as one resource, which is not bad. Uh, next up, there is the blue 15, and that's over here. That means we would get two tiles, and having more tiles would be nice, but that's not really our main blocking point. And finally, there is the red 10, which is over there. It's a single level tile, though, so we just get one resource for that, plus, of course, this resource from our bonus. Honestly, I don't think I like any of those options, so let's go ahead and ditch this token. That does mean we are losing two points at the end of the game, but I'm really hoping the next four cards will get us some better options. In particular, I think urbanizing would probably be good for us at this point. So we will draw four cards from the top. And this is what we have. Unfortunately, we do have some urbanizing options. L is right over there, and D is next to two other tiles. I do like the idea of D, but if we put one of our blue tiles down there that would create a district, we would have just one resource compared to the two of the green player, and that means they would be winning the district, so we would be giving them success points, which I don't really want to do. Although, I suppose you could say the same thing about L over here, because we'd be adding a blue with one of our tokens, so that would just add more success points to the person who's currently winning this area, which is actually the green player as well. Then again, right now the green player is getting nothing for these two, but if we went here we'd also get a success point, so there's definitely things pulling me in both directions, and I think we are going to go with D. On top of that, let's go with this 14 to leave ourselves flexible to potentially put this down on top of something else as we approach the later stages of the game. Alright, we've all made our decisions, and as I said, we're going to urbanize at the D location. We can place this 14 like that, along with a resource and a construction token, then we can put this um, probably like that, I think. After that, we can activate this. That's going to get us one success point. And then this is going to get us two tiles. Now, this is actually pretty great because there are two tiles left in the supply. So by taking both of these, we have just exhausted the supply. And that means we actually pause our turn because it's now time for the once per game buyback of tiles. Remember, the way this works is all players are going to simultaneously select a number of tiles that they want, and then we will reveal those, put those back into the supply, shuffle up face down, and we will all get one success point for every tile that we put back. Currently, we have three of these tiles, so we could put all three of them back if we wanted to, but that seems like that might not be a good idea. Actually, we just drew this red 20, and remember, we want to have our tokens on top of red at the end of the game, so I feel like maybe we should just get rid of these two and keep this one since it's pretty good, and then that will get us two success points. I think that's going to be our plan, so now we have to just wait and see how many tiles our opponents are going to be putting back. We've all made our decisions, and the black player is going to put two back, so they will gain two success points for those. We are putting two back, so we are also going to gain two success points. And then the green player is putting seven of these tiles back into the supply. So that is seven success points that they get for that. After that, we can shuffle this up. And now if this ever exhausts again, then that will trigger the end of the game. And we will play until the end of the round. And then the game will be over. 
Remember, the other trigger happens once any player has all of the resources out here in the city. In that case, we once again finish the round and then proceed to final scoring. Well, we can come back to our turn, and we just took our benefits for activating these tiles when urbanizing, but we haven't taken any of our bonuses yet. So we will gain one resource, we will also gain two success points, and we will gain one tile, which we'll put right over here. Alright, we are done, so the green player can go, and they are exploiting the red nine again. Uh, we pass that over to them, and once again, they don't want this passed over, in particular to the black player, because they would be very incentivized to place a non-red tile there, and that would take away a lot of points that the green player is banking on. The red nine is a level two tile, so they can take two resources from the supply, but there aren't actually any over there, so they're not going to get anything for their main exploit action. But of course they have a bunch of bonuses for exploiting, although two out of the five are also gaining more resources which they can't do. That's not too surprising that there aren't any in the supply considering they have so many abilities to gain those. Now they will take two tiles from the new supply, and they will take one success point, so overall this was essentially a blocking turn. They didn't gain much beyond obviously one success point, but they really did not want this card in the hands of any of their opponents. Green is done so black can go, and they are urbanizing at the F location with this yellow 9. That's right over here, so they can put it on that spot. They'll put the F over here along with one of their resources and a construction token. Then they'll activate this level 3 yellow, and that is going to get them 3 success points. After that, they'll take their bonuses for urbanizing. That is going to be 2 resources, although this is the last one that they had in the supply, and then they will also gain one more success point. That's finished their turn, and now we can reset for the next round by passing cards. It looks like it's possible this could be the last round of the game. We'll just have to see how those triggers go. It's also, it's also possible that we'll have two more rounds. The green player gets to go first, so they will draw a card. So will black, and then this is the card that we drew, and it's the yellow 10. So these are our four cards, and we once again have just two resources, which is a bummer. Although the two building cards that we have are yellow, and we have a yellow tile, so we could get away with placing this down without incurring the mismatched color penalty. Yellow 10 is here, and yellow 7 is over there, which is certainly not close to everything else. Uh, we can see that the yellow 7 has a black resource on it, whereas the 10 has one of ours. So if we placed on top of that, we would get this back, which is definitely a consideration that we should keep in mind. Another thing to keep in mind is how the majorities are going for this gigantic yellow district. The black player currently has 9 resources. And we have 7, so if we placed this 15 down there, we would then have 8. So we would still not be quite there, but at least we'd be close. Unfortunately, we would be losing on the tiebreaker as it stands at the moment, though. Now, another important thing to keep in mind is the bonuses at the bottom if we do build a floor. This right here with the 7 is going to be an exploit bonus, getting us 2 success points when we exploit. But we also get 2 success points for every exploit bonus that we have at the end of the game. So this would be worth two points just for playing it in front of us. And this one says at the end of the game, we would get one success point for every resource on a yellow tile. Currently, we have seven of those, and we'd have eight if we use this to put the 15 down over there. So that means this would be worth eight points to us. And honestly, that seems like a pretty good swing, even if we are not taking a majority from the black player. So I think this is what we are going to do, and we'll put this yellow 15 on top of it. Well, we've all made our decisions, and the green player gets to go first, and they are constructing this blue 7 on top of a red 7. The values are equal, so they don't have to pay a penalty, but the colors are different, so they will have to pay one resource back to the supply. After that, they are going to cover up this spot that has a couple of their resources, so they get those back. Then they have to put three of their resources on top, along with the construction token. Just like that, they've made this blue district significantly bigger, adding these two in to the greater blue district over there, and the green player is currently in the lead there. Next up, for bonuses, they will gain one tile and one resource, so they once again have none of their resource in the main supply. Finally, they can add yet another exploit benefit in front of them. That is their 6-1 total, so we are even more happier to not let them have access to this, because that would have been worth a ton of success points to them. Green is done, so black can go, and they are going to be constructing this blue 12 on top of a red 18. That is a different color, so they have to spend one resource back to the supply, and this new tile is six lower than the tile that's already out there. 
that means they have to pay six of their success points back to the bank, and that is pretty costly. But after they do this, you'll notice down below, this is going to get them two success points for every one of their build a floor bonuses that they have once the game is over. And they currently have six of those. So this is worth 12 success points to them. And they figured having to spend six in order to get 12 means they still get six more success points. And they decided at this point in the game that that was still worth it. So let's look out here, and this is also pretty great for us at this point in the game because we have three of our resources on top of the red 18. That means we'll get all of these back, so we now have five resources, and since this is a different color than the active player, we are going to gain one success for each, so we will get three success points for being bumped off there. Then the blue 12 will go there, and that is the fourth level, which means all four of these resources will be placed on top of it along with one construction token. After that, black is going to gain all of these benefits, which is another reason why they did want to construct a floor. That's going to be three success points first, and then they're going to take two plus one or three tiles from the supply. And finally, they will gain one resource from the supply, and that is the single resource they just paid as a penalty. So there is once again no black resources out there in the main supply. Finally, they can place this out, and that goes right over here along with their other scoring cards. Let's focus back out here, because as you can see, that blue 12 made this blue district even bigger, although the green player is still hanging on. The black player was pretty confident this would put them in the lead over here. They were not expecting this to be added in. Currently, the green player has nine resources in that district, and the black player has seven. Well, black is done, so that means we can go, and we are going to be constructing a new level, and we have a whole bunch of resources down in front of us. We don't have to pay a penalty since these match the color, and when we place this here, we'll get that resource back. Now we can put two of these down on top of the 15, along with a construction token. And then we once again gain no bonuses for constructing a new floor, but then we do get to add this right over here, which will get us one success point at the end of the game for every resource that we have on top of a yellow tile. And once again, we currently have eight of those. Well, the action phase is done and the end game trigger was not hit, so we can move on to the next round by passing cards. After that, the black player will draw one card, we will draw one, and then the green player will draw one, and we've actually just exhausted the deck again, so we have to build a new one. Currently, there are eight construction tokens out here, so we have to add all of those cards into the main deck. Oh, that's interesting. At the top of the new discard, we have one of these 20s. And as you can see, they are just worth a flat nine success points at the end of the game if you're able to get those into your area. Although, of course, since this is in the discard pile, it seems unlikely that that card's going to get into any of them. All right, it's time for us to choose a new card. The first thing we should take a look at are the endgame scoring bonuses for these two building cards. We've seen this one before. It's worth two success points for each one of our exploit bonuses, and we have four of those, so that would be worth eight points to us right now. But then this one is different. It is worth two success points for every yellow card currently in front of us, and it counts itself. So that means we would get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten points. So this one is technically worth even more points than the 17 if we were to get it into our tableau before the game ends. The 19 is right there, and we currently only have one tile. Now, this is a 20, so we can put it on top of there without having to spend any of our success tokens, but then it's the wrong color, so we'd have to spend one of these, and then that would be the fourth level, and we would need four resources to go on top of there, so we are one resource short. That is such a bummer, because if we did that, that would take away four of the black player's resources in that yellow district, which means it would tip it in our favor and get us a bunch of points. If we had just one more resource, we'd be able to pull that off right now. That's really unfortunate, but let's take a look at our other options which is this 17. If we played that one, it is a color match, so we don't have to spend any of these. And in fact, it has one of our resources on top of it already. So if we played this one and put the 20 right there, we would have two of our resources there. And of course, adding a new resource on a red tile is going to be worth one point to us because of this over here. Unfortunately, though, that wouldn't really change the majorities in that current district. So 17 is definitely playable, but not an earth shattering move. And man, I'm so bummed that we can't play this 19. Uh, now we can look over here and see that we could urbanize J or G. G is right here, and that's interesting. That is next to one, two, three, four, five success points worth of activations. Of course, if we urbanized, we would also get two more success points. So by going for the G, we would get seven points just for that. 
Unfortunately, that is realistically all we'd get for it, though. And remember, just by playing this 17, we would be getting eight more points because of this bonus at the bottom, plus another point for putting the resource over there. So unfortunately, I think this is probably the thing that we should do, but it's not the big late game play that I was hoping for. Either way, we can put this face down in front of us along with the only tile that we had. All right, we've all made our decisions, and the black player is going to go first, and they are going to be urbanizing at the H location with this 18. So they can place that right over here. Then they're going to put one of their resources down along with a construction token, and then they have announced that they actually have all of their resource tokens out here on the city. They have none behind their screen, and there are none over here in the supply. Since that happened, that means one of the endgame triggers has been hit, so the game will be over at the end of this round. Remember, if the black player ends up getting some of theirs back as we continue through the round, that will not change the fact that the game end has been triggered. Now that urbanization is next to a level 2 yellow, so they will gain two success points. And then for this bonus, they will gain another one. Of course, they won't get anything for taking resources from the supply since there aren't any over there. Black is done with their final turn of the game, so now we can go and we are constructing this 20 onto the 17. As we discussed before, that means we're just going to get this back. Then we are going to place two of our tokens on top of it, along with a construction token. Although, these tokens don't really matter. They have no impact on the city once the game is over. After that, we of course get to add this into our scoring area. That's finished our last turn of the game, so now the green player can go, and they are constructing a floor. They're putting this blue 17 on top of the yellow 7. The colors are different, so they do have to pay one resource back to the supply. And then there is one black resource on that spot, so black will get this back along with one success point, so they technically don't have all of their tokens out here in the city, but again, since it happened at some point, the end game trigger is still in effect. Now the green player can put this here, along with a construction token, and two of their resources. After that, they gain one resource as well as one tile, although these aren't actually worth anything once the game is over. Finally, they can add this into their tableau, and that's finished the final turn of the game. This means it's time for final scoring, and the first thing we will get is two success points for each one of these tokens that we did not use. We used one, so we have one remaining, so we're going to gain two success points for that. And then, unfortunately, both of our opponents didn't use either of theirs, so each of them is going to gain four success points from the supply. After that, we can gain success points for the end game cards that we have played. We have four of these out here, and we will start with these two, since those just apply to the tableau that we have in front of us. As you can see, this is going to get us two points for every urbanization bonus that we have, and this one will get us two points for every exploit bonus. We have four urbanization and one exploit, so that means all total that is going to be worth ten more success points to us across both of those cards. After that, we will gain one success point for each resource we have on a red tile, as well as one success point for each resource on a yellow tile. In general, we did a pretty good job of targeting that. We only have two resources that are not on red or yellow. So we're going to get 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 points for those 10 resources out here on the red and yellow. That'll go here, and now we can score the other players' end game cards. The green player only has one, and that gets them one success point for each of the resources on blue tiles. And they ended with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So that is going to be 11 success points for that one card. Finally, the black player will score their two endgame scoring cards. This one will get them two points for every one of their construct of floor bonuses. And they have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 of them. So that is going to get them 12 success points. And then after that, they are going to gain one success point for every tile on the city that has one or two of their resources on it. Looking back out at the city, they have one, two, three, four of those, so that is going to be four more success points. The final thing to score are districts in the city. I figure we'll start at the top and move down, and this tile is not a part of a district because it's not next to any other tiles of its color, so we can move on to this gigantic blue district that formed out here in the north. We have two resources in this district. The black player has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and the green player has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So green is in the majority, and they are going to gain one success point for every resource, no matter what the color is, in this district. Overall, there are 20 resources here, so they can take that from the supply, and then the second place player is black, and they will get success points equal to the number of their own resources in that district. There are seven black resources, so black will get seven success points.
We can move on to this tile, which is not part of a district since it's not next to any other reds. And then over here, we have this gigantic yellow district. It seems like things really coalesced into gigantic districts in this play. There were ways to potentially break things up, but it seems like players did a pretty good job of stopping that from happening. Each time you play the game, the size of these districts is going to vary based off of how the players play and how the cards come out of the deck. Either way, we can score this yellow district, and we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 of our resources. The green player has none, and the black player has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 total. 9 is greater than 8, which is unfortunate, so that means the black player will get 17 success points. And then we came in second place, so we get one success for each of our own tokens, and we have 8 of those, so we will get 8 success points. After that, we can score this red district, which was gigantic earlier on in the game and ended up being pretty small. Now, there are four of the green resources and two of ours, so green is in the lead. They are going to gain six success points for those. And then in second place, we will get just two. Finally, down here, there are a couple of solo tiles that are not next to any other tiles of their color, so neither of them are districts, and that means we have now successfully scored the city. Final scoring is done, so now we just have to add up our success points, and the player with the most will be the winner. Over here, it looks like the green player ended the game with 58 points. In the middle, we ended the game with 67. And finally, the black player ended with 72, and it looks like they are going to win the game. That's a little surprising to me, considering it seemed like the green player scored more points for these districts. But as the game was going on, the black player, as well as us, did a better job of getting success points through our actions. Now, the black player did get a pretty gigantic payout for winning this district, and I don't want to minimize the impact that that had on the game. It is interesting that we came in second, though, considering we did very poorly with the overall scoring. We didn't come in first in any of these districts, but we got a ton of points off of these two bonuses over here. Also, we ended the game with four final scoring cards compared to the one and two of our opponents. Well, at this point, the game is obviously over with the black player winning. We came in second and green came in third. And that is going to bring this overall tutorial and video to a close. I hope that you enjoyed learning how to play this game. And I would like to ask that if there were any turns that you saw that we could have done something different that would have been creative and helped us out to maybe even win the game, then please comment down below and let me know what you think. I'm quite curious to see what your plans could have been. As always, I'd like to thank everyone who's been supporting this channel, including these producer-level Patreon supporters. If you too would like to directly support the channel in the creation of future videos like this one, then please go to jongetsgames.com support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button for it down below, as well as the subscribe button for the channel. Thanks for watching.